Now, what is a winning menu? It appeals to a wide range of different taste buds and taste palettes. It also tailors to specifically our client avatar because even within the client avatar that we are serving, they all have different taste palettes and also different circumstances as well that we want to tailor to. So then that way we can strategically be able to make as much as possible from these people. It also increases the chance that people are going to order from you again and again. And that's the reason why having a winning menu is essential for your business's success. Now, also, I just touched up on it. Why is it important? It because it allows you to make a very profitable offering to your customers and also each item serves a very particular purpose, okay? So we're not just throwing items on the menu just because we want to, but rather it's very strategic on what we are serving to our customers. Now, the biggest menu mistakes that I see a lot of small businesses make is the fact that they offer way too many variations in the same product. So for example, cupcake business, they offer 10 cupcake flavors because they want to appeal to the masses. They want to make sure that they appeal to everyone because their customers are asking for this flavor, that flavor, this flavor. As I was sharing with you, there is something called the Pareto's law because 20% of the items should be making up for 80% of all your revenue. So that's the reason why we want to cut down on the flavors that we offer and we only want to serve the items and the flavors that are the most popular. So for example, if we're talking about the cupcake example, it is very difficult for us to sell out all 10 flavors every single day. And if we don't sell out of the 10 different flavors, then what's going to happen? That means there's going to be spoilage. And when spoilage happens, that means we're going to be a lot less profitable. So instead of doing that, I would offer maybe even just five flavors, the most popular vanilla, chocolate, strawberry, and offer it at different ways of appearing. What does that mean? That means we offer normal size cupcakes. We have cupcake in a jar to go and we have mini cupcake samplers. So basically you're offering different variation of the same product, not just different flavors. And that way you're going to appeal to more people. Now we're going to be talking about the four different menu items you would need to shape your winning menu. First up, the hero item. This acts as a baseline pricing for your whole menu, okay? How you decide to show up with your customers and in front of them. And if you haven't already done so, go back to the previous lesson. We talked about competitive analysis to see what your competitors are charging and how you're going to be able to stand and where you stand within this whole market, right? So after you figured out, hey, you know what? We're going to stand right here because this is the quality we offer and the experience we offer, which is the reason why we can charge this price amongst our competitors. You figured it out already. So that's how we figured out our ice cream and selling it at $5.95. This is our dessert brand and we are selling this item for $5.95. This is the baseline of all the different items we're going to be offering. So same thing for you. Identify your baseline based on the hero item that you're serving. Second, a decoy item. What does that mean? It means it's going to be a much more expensive hero item. Okay. So for example, make your hero item look way more attractive than it is, or you can bundle with a bigger variation. So for example, a $30 gold flake ice cream. When you serve something like this, your intention is not to sell a lot of these items. Rather, this acts as a decoy, okay? When you put a $30 gold flake ice cream against a $6 ice cream that looks like this, in relation, when people are comparing, this becomes very attractive as a hero item versus a $30 ice cream cone like this. And that's the reason why you would want to have a decoy item because it just makes your hero item look that much more attractive. Okay. A pro tip is that a lot of small businesses actually price really high to lead their customers to believe their main item, the hero item is an amazing deal. So for example, us in Vancouver, we have something called the Steve's and pizza. They sell pizza for $850 dollars guys $850 pizza have you even heard of something like that before this is what it looks like okay it has a medley of tiger prawns lobster ratatouille steelhead and caviar selling for $850 and do you think that they they bank on selling a lot of these to make money no they're having this there as a decoy item just to make all the other pizzas that they serve 
seem much more affordable. $45 a pizza comparative to $8.50. Okay, you know what? $45 is a cheap pizza. You know what? I'll take it. But when you put a $45 pizza amongst Domino's, Pizza Hut, this is a very expensive pizza. Yet these guys are doing exceptionally well, having lineups out the doors all the time. That's why decoy pricing is so, so important in your menu mix. Next up, alternative item. It's a product that is less expensive than your hero item because sometimes when people are coming, um, ordering from you online per se, they're not really looking for exactly what you have to offer. But if you have a cheaper option, it becomes an alternative that they're like, you know what, I don't mind giving it a try. The thing that you need to understand is that the variation and the alternative item could just be a smaller variation of your hero item. So you give them a taste, a teaser of what you are selling and the quality of your product. So then that way, once you have the foot in the door, then you can sell them the whole package, right? It shouldn't cannibalize the hero item itself. So for example, if I'm selling my cup of ice cream, um, my ice cream sandwiches wouldn't cannibalize my cup of ice cream because this could be thrown into the freezer so then I can grab it anytime I want and the cup of ice cream, I can have it right there and then. It could be a product that caters to a different audience as well. So for example, ice cream sandwich. People, Some people just love ice cream sandwich while others want their whole sundae. And that's the reason why we should always have an alternative item for our whole winning menu matrix. Okay, and it should be a little bit less in pricing because that becomes a teaser to get your foot in the door. Next up, upsell item. These are add-on products to increase your order totals, okay? These are complementary items. That is an easy yes, right? So think about if I were to order an ice cream and someone's telling me, hey, you want? do you wanna add a toasted marshmallow for only $1.95? Sure, it's only $1.95, why not? And that's a really great piece of upsell item that's gonna bring your total value up and you're gonna end up making more money by having upsell items that are an easy win. Key word here, guys, is to have an easy win. We don't wanna have any friction, it just wants to be an add-on. With a lot of different menus, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a lot of add-on items that are less than $10, because if it's less than $10, people usually are like, yeah, why not? Because it is an easy win. Pro tip here is that all products do not need to launch at the same time. I know there's gonna be a lot of work that you're gonna be doing to build your food business brand. So having said that, we don't want to launch all these products all at the same time. It's a very common thing that for businesses to have coming soon on their website or on your Instagram, but you can just give a teaser to your customers of what is to come. Not having these items will not break your menu, would not break your brand. And I'm just sharing this with you so then when you're ready, you can launch these items and plan for it. So what we've done with Bulbasaur, our case study to showcase to you is basically having different items and writing down the strategy, writing down the prices, the description of what we're offering and the product name and whether it is um, a hero item or just basically a decor or an upsell. So this is a really great uh, case study for you to actually learn from. Once again, go into the resources below download it and actually read through this as an example. So then that way, when you are doing your own, you can determine your menu items with your prices. Also, you should get organized with the menu pricing template. Once again, in the resources below, 